Hey, good morning, everyone, and thanks for logging on here and checking out your latest long-range forecast. Michael Clark with BAM Weather. We're going to talk about the upcoming pattern this week and kind of look at um, a little bit of a calmer, drier pattern, but also perhaps the return of a more active pattern as we get into early June. So there's a lot to discuss, a lot to dissect. We'll get right into it. Make sure you share the video with a friend and subscribe to the YouTube channel for the latest. This is a look here at the total precipitation departure from normal for the month of May, basically the first 26 days. You can see where precipitation has really failed to materialize in terms of from normal. Now, has it rained? Yes, but from a normal perspective, we have had a difficult time getting much in the way of rainfall, at least for the month of May in this particular area. More so really right in through here, through kind of the heart of the grain belt, where there's just been some below normal rainfall. Now, it hasn't been a sense of, you know, just crazy dryness, but nonetheless, uh, a lot of rain has come into the south and to the east and even in here in the northern plains. Uh, but even where it's been drier, some folks are still struggling to even uh, get out there and get planted, which is just interesting nonetheless here. Um, we'll go back out. We didn't mean to zoom all the way in like that. This is the month to date temperatures. Okay. It's overall been cooler across the eastern grain belt down into the south central U.S. The deep south and southeast warmer and much warmer than normal too across the northern plains. Been a very odd pattern, hasn't it? It's just been, just been very interesting uh, overall here. This is a look at the Clarity platform this morning. Radar here as of about 1050 eastern. And again, we do see some rain coming down across Iowa and southern Minnesota. Um, it's that that's that's a good rain right now here, late May in the western parts of the state, and then some heavy rains in the Mid Atlantic and down again to the south. Some heavy uh, rain and thunderstorms going on across Mississippi, Alabama. Okay. In terms of the forecast, again, this is all stuff you can do in Clarity. You can kind of dissect maps in 24-hour rainfall forecast increments, updates every hour. This is rainfall over the next day. You can see where it's focused. Central Illinois, you may pick up a half inch of rain, a quarter to a half an inch here across portions of Iowa. You may get three tenths or four tenths of an inch of rain here over the next day. The heaviest will be focused off to the south and to the east. Okay, we talked about that soil moisture and, and where the rain, you know, at least is most needed. Um, again, this has kind of been the spot where it really struggled to see you know, precipitation really be widespread and, 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 you know, plentiful, if you will, across northern Illinois. Nonetheless, um, it, it turns drier here overall over the next week. You look at the seven-day rainfall totals, and it's, it, there's not a whole lot in the way of rainfall over the next seven days, um, with the exception of Kansas, Nebraska. But you can kind of see where the hole is here and where the lack of rain will show up over the next seven days. It depends on when you get into that five, six, seven day range, though, you got to have to start asking questions depending on what models you look at. All right, we're going to look at the day two forecast here for rain using the evening GFS, um, the overnight GFS. And you can see the heavy rain potential there in Nebraska, Kansas, northern Oklahoma, and then that batch going through in central Illinois, which we talked about. That day three rainfall forecast is where the models differ. Thursday into Friday, the European is dry, and the GFS says we bring a round of rain into the Ohio Valley, Illinois, Indiana, and eventually stretching in into day four into portions of Ohio. So Friday night into Saturday, this is a 24-hour rainfall projection across central Ohio. That's a lot of rain in a short period of time. So we'll have to see how that pans out, how it plays out. But latest data, American model data, says, hey, um, We've got the potential for rainfall here this weekend. We'll go into day five, okay? <clears throat> More rain possible there in Missouri. Look for a day five threat Saturday night into Sunday of possibly rain and thunderstorms. Illinois, Indiana uh, there as well. We'll go into day six here, day seven. And you can see some additional rains being possible across the central plains up there, even across the southern Canadian prairies. All right, again, this is a 24-hour rainfall forecast heavy. It's day seven, so some adjustments may be needed, but notice still pretty dry here overall. Um, it's later into the period where the forecast starts to get pretty active. By day 10, um, 
it starts to suggest some pretty heavy rainfall risks here getting into that into the first week of June. Okay. That is a one day and then another and then the next day rainfall outcome. It's pretty aggressive there out just through 11 to 12 days. And when we look at total QPF here on the GFS, that's an interesting look from the, the, the overnight run. All right. There's a lot of moisture showing up on that particular uh, plot here of the model. And we need to watch this. Is this going to be something that may start to come to fruition, which would wipe out Illinois uh, in northern Indiana, southern Michigan, eastern Iowa, dryness. So it's an aggressive forecast. That's the GFS. Here's the European. Okay, we'll go out all the way. Quite a bit different. You can see here on the European, I mean, it's almost not raining at all in this spot versus the GFS. It's quite a bit different. So that is something we're going to need to watch. All right. So what I've done with week one, that's on the top. Week one, temperatures, it's cooler than average for the majority of the growing regions, except the prairies in the northern plains. It's warm. It's dry for week one, uh, drier than normal. Now it'll still rain. Um, it's raining today, actually. And then we have to keep in mind there is a potential there that Thursday's system overproduces a little bit versus the European guidance. It's a little bit drier. Week two, the warm-up. The pattern starts to warm up. Ridge in the east, trough in the west, brings precip back into the whole central portion of the country, even possibly the Ohio Valley, above normal precip to start out June. would be the idea. Okay, This really delaying the onset of what we potentially see at some point this summer of a warmer and drier risk to the overall weather pattern. So far, though, that's not showing up. And it is something important to note. Even our North American ensemble forecast system is saying there's an 80 to 100 percent probability of above normal temperatures creeping in in the 8 to 14 day time frame right now, especially east, mid-Atlantic, northeast. OK, so updated 16 to 30 day outlook. It starts cool, we think, potentially in the early time of the outlook, but can end warmer. It's that mid to late June time frame where it's possible that we start to warm it up overall, if you will. And then as you look at precipitation, it's not a pattern where, again, it's, you know, it's not raining. Um, it is a pattern where it is potentially um, starting active in this period, but ending less active. And we kind of highlighted the area here where the persistence has led to already drier than normal soils. But to be quite honest with you, the forecast confidence at this range is pretty low. Now, we've got a little bit lower forecast confidence right now than we normally do at this particular lead time. To start the forecast, the pattern in the North Pacific has a trough in the eastern U.S. And we look at these pattern correlation tools that we use in a ridge in the west, which would keep it cooler okay, and a little bit more active. It tries to sprawl out a ridge and return it by mid to late June. Okay, The June forecast prospects right now, if you look at multi-model ensemble guidance, it says, hey, we can stay at to above normal precip in here. That's the current projection. At to slightly above normal temps or normal temps. The core of the warmth focused west and southwest where the core of the dry risks would be uh, in this particular outcome. Okay, that's more of a persistence forecast, if you will. When you look at the CFS, it's interesting for the month of June what it does here is it's, it's trying to do this where it's keeping it dry central and wetter to the deep south. Almost like a split flow, right? It's almost like a split flow setup. The temperature forecast, warmer to the east, cooler to the south and west, where that split flow would set up. It's not all too different from what we've really seen for the month of May. So we will have updated June forecasts posted to the Clarity products and whatnot later. We'll continue to update June as we have to make a final call here in the next day or so. Uh, on the YouTube channel and whatnot. And we'll continue to have these amazing drawings you see back here on my whiteboard from my kids as well. Those will come to you too. So make sure to subscribe to the channel. Check back for the latest. Talk to you soon.